Hi, my name is Romy. I'm a third year grad student at the Department of Biology at the University of Washington. Hey everyone, my name is Luke. I'm a fourth year PhD student at the University of Washington in the Biology Department. My name is Hannah and I am a sixth year graduate student at the University of Washington. As PhD students, we have different milestones that we all have to complete. And this video's purpose is to highlight those different milestones that most PhD students have to complete. With that said, we are all students in the University of Washington Biology Department, and as such, we are going to mostly be talking about our graduate school experiences and the milestones that we know to be applicable to us. So usually during our first year, we start with a prescription meeting. In your prescription meeting, uh, different faculty and postdocs from your uh, department are going to sit down with you, uh, overview your academic career, and devise a list of uh, potential classes that you must uh, either teach or take in order to prepare yourself for your upcoming PhD career. Also in this first year, if you haven't come in with an advisor, you're usually going to do rotations where you will be going to different labs and this serves as an opportunity for you to really get to know some new research techniques, uh, get to know those labs, get to know those PIs. During the rotations, you will get a good feel about whether or not you would like to have that person be your PI or that lab be the place where you finish your PhD career. After you've done your rotations, you would usually pick um, an advisor if you haven't already. Once you have your advisor, then you also have to pick uh, the members of your committee. Your committee is going to be the professors that you would like to see within or outside of your department uh, advising you throughout your thesis or your dissertation. Once you've settled in into your new lab with your PI, you will now have the time to devise the arc of your dissertation. Uh, this is a time for you to really think about what questions you want to tackle. Then you usually go ahead and do what's called the qualification or general exam. These uh, tests can last anywhere between an hour and three hours. Uh, they can include questions that are specific to your thesis or broad within your field. Usually in the last year of your PhD, you'll be applying your job for jobs. Um, so that when you defend your thesis, you have somewhere to work. So Romy just did a really good job at giving you kind of a broad outline of major milestones that you'll have to complete during your PhD program. What I'm here to do is kind of address the things that don't really fit neatly into a first, second, third year category. So early in your grad career, you're really just getting your feet wet and becoming comfortable in your lab and in your department. So part of this is forming a relationship with your PI and other grad students in your lab and also uh, postdocs and faculty more broadly. A big part of your first few years is gonna be reading. Familiarizing yourself with the literature is a big task and it takes a lot of time to get to the level where you can start to ask really interesting questions in your field. In addition to reading, you're also gonna to start to write, specifically writing grants and figuring out how you're gonna fund yourself through the rest of your PhD. The middle portion of your PhD program is really gonna be broken down into three main kind of blocks, collecting data, writing up your data, and presenting your data. Collecting data takes up a lot of the time, so this can mean different things for different people depending on what your specific field is. This could be running experiments, visiting museum collections, or analyzing data using statistical software. Once you've collected some data, hopefully you'll have some preliminary results that you can write up in either publications or abstracts for professional conferences. And then it's in this middle chunk that you really should start presenting your research at these professional conferences and begin networking with other researchers in your field. For the last stage of your PhD program, really this should be categorized as getting ready for the next step. Finishing up some of those last experiments or collecting those last bits of data and then finishing your dissertation, which is gonna mean writing a lot. So you already would have been writing grants and uh, maybe short publications and abstracts throughout your career but finishing up your dissertation takes a lot of time and will dominate a lot of your time during your final years of your PhD. Also, as Romy mentioned, you're gonna be again, applying for jobs at this time. And that will also uh, be a big aspect of trying to figure out what you wanna do once you finish your PhD. In addition to progressing with your research, your PhD is also a time to develop professionally and gain the skills necessary for the next steps of your career. Despite still being in school, classes are a fairly minor part of your PhD. Often you'll be taking classes in the first or second year of your program and you'll gain skills that will help you with your research. You may determine that you need additional skills in later years of your PhD and then you might consider taking additional classes at that time. Teaching is also a large component of your PhD experience. 
Some programs require you to teach a certain number of quarters or semesters, often as few as two. Occasionally, in order to obtain funding to support your research, you'll be teaching on the side, or you may be interested in teaching as a career and thus do more teaching during your PhD. You may also interact with undergrads as a research mentor by bringing undergraduates into your lab to help you with your own projects. This is a great way to both gain skills in becoming a mentor and to get some help, a little extra help, on your research. Many graduate students are also involved in outreach activities. Outreach activities may include volunteering in elementary school classrooms, or leading tours at museums, or leading workshops at science centers. Being a PhD student is more than just 